As promised, we are here with all the mythological references that we have spotted in Nagashwin's Kalki 289880. So sit back, relax and enjoy this video. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the film. But if you're done watching it already, let's dive straight into the video. While you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel as it helps us a lot. Ashwatthama and his sin. At the beginning of the movie, we saw the battle of the Kurukshetra was at its peak and both the Pandavas and Kauravas were trying to get the better of each other. Amidst the battle, there was Ashwatthama, the son of great Dronacharya, who was fighting from the side of the Kauravas. Ashwatthama made one mistake that changed his life forever and it also had an impact on the generations to follow. He tried to kill the unborn child of Uttara by using a Brahma Shirashtra weapon from a small strand of grass as by doing so he could wipe out the entire pandava lineage uttara was abhimanyu's wife and she was widowed after the warrior gave his life fighting alongside his brothers previously ashwatthama also killed five pandava kids mistaking them for their fathers to avenge the death of his father he also killed drishtadyumna son of drupad his father's old friend turned enemy we got to see a scene in the intro where Drupad's Ayonija's son Drishtadyumna was killing Dronacharya and next to him was a dead body of an elephant called Ashwatthama. Pandavas, especially Dharmaraj Yudhishthir, partially lied to Dronacharya that Ashwatthama was dead in order to render Dronacharya defenseless. But in fact, it was the elephant who got killed. Lord Krishna and Kalki. Lord Krishna, who drove the chariot of Arjuna in the battle of Kurukshetra, appeared in front of Ashwatthama and he told him that he would be punished for his misdeeds. It was then that Krishna prophesied that Ashwatthama would become immortal and he would be present till the time Kaliyug ended and a new cycle started. Krishna told Ashwatthama that the sole purpose of his existence would be to safeguard the life of Sumati, the woman who would give birth to the last avatar of Lord Vishnu, Kalki. The white horse running behind Lord Krishna is a nod to Devadatta the divine horse that will become integral to Kalki's upcoming conquests. He took away Ashwatthama's gem from his forehead which gave him immense power and in the text Krishna cursed him to be tortured by multiple wounds oozing with pus and blood for thousands of years. In the film Ashwatthama's face can be seen to have multiple wounds and after getting the money back he was able to heal himself. From the ancient texts we learn that Lord Krishna also revived Uttara's son and named him Parikshit. A fun fact, after Lord Krishna's death, Pandavas left their home and made Parikshit the king of Hastinapur. After that, Parikshit encountered Kali, who finally started messing with the mortal realm after Lord Krishna's death. He found Kali fatally clubbing a cow and an ox, who were the literal personifications of the goddess of earth and dharma. It signified the premonition of his future dark reign. We will discuss more about him in a different segment of this video. 289880 Immortality can be considered a boon only by those who do not realize how one feels when they see their own passing away in front of their eyes and they still have to live and endure in a world that they no longer recognize. Ashwatthama knew that it was a curse disguised as a blessing. He was a learned man and he knew that he would have to endure and suffer due to that curse. So Ashwatthama waited and he waited for generations. He saw the downfall of mankind and he realized that humans were probably the worst species to walk on the face of earth. They destroyed the planet that gave them everything. They took everything for granted and their actions were fueled by their own selfish interests. Ashwatthama in his wildest fantasies also wouldn't have imagined the kind of tragedies he would witness, the kind of days he would see. Days became years and years became centuries and slowly the planet was on the threshold of being completely destroyed by the greed of human beings. The end of the Kaliyug was approaching and Ashwatthama knew that the 10th avatar of Lord Vishnu would be born any time as promised and he would be free of his curse. 6000 years after the events of Kurukshetra, Kalki 289880 is set around this period, which is referred to as the dark age according to Hindu mythology. Some ancient Hindu texts suggest that Shri Krishna died on February 17th, 3102 BCE, and from that point Vapara Yuga ended and Kali Yuga started so it was a great nod to this theory as Ashwatthama was fighting the complex soldiers he lifted a bunch of them on his shoulder which looked a lot like Sheshanaga protecting the 10th avatar of Lord Vishnu Karna at the end of the film we saw that Bhairava picked up the weapon called Vijaya Dhanush that was once used by Karna which translates to the son of Surya Deva or the god of the sun on the battlefield of Kurukshetra Ashwatthama considered Karna as one of his good friends and when he saw Bhairava he realized that he was the reincarnation of Karna. 
There is a possibility that Bhairava is probably a direct descendant of Karna and from the texts we know that one of Karna's kids survived the Mahabharata war whose name was Brishketu whom the Pandavas adopted after the holy war and Bhairava is probably a distant relative of the surviving offspring of Kunteya who prefer to be known as Radheya Now the staff that Ashwatthama was holding all this time was probably Vijaya Dhanush a direct rival to Arjun's Gandiv The bow Vijaya was crafted by the divine architect Vishwakarma for the god Shiva to destroy Tripura, a city built by the sons of Tarakasura. Shiva used Vijaya to launch the powerful weapon Pashupatastra and obliterate Tripura. He then entrusted the bow to Indra for safekeeping. Due to its immense destructive power, the Asuras greatly feared Vijaya. Impressed by Parasharama's valor, Shiva gifted Vijaya and the other weapons to him. Parasharama used Vijaya on 21 occasions to nearly eliminate the Kshatriya class when they became oppressive and sinful. After each victory, he donated the conquered lands to the Brahmins to restore order. According to the Mahabharata, Parasharama took Karna as his student and recognizing his exceptional talent and favoring him, bestowed upon Karna the Vijaya bow along with other divine weapons. However, Karna refrained from using the bow. relying instead on his skills and valor and feeling guilty for accidentally killing a brahmin's cow with it during practice karna only wielded vijaya during the kurukshetra war on the 17th day of his battle against arjuna as it was a fight to the death krishna advised arjuna that karna was invincible as long as he held vijaya when karna's chariot wheel got stuck in the mud and he left the boat to free the wheel arjuna seized the moment to kill him with anjalika astra fulfilling karna's destiny Karna lost his battle not because he was the inferior fighter but because Parasharama cursed him that he would forget his weaponry at a crucial moment and that's how he lost before drawing his last breath Karna returned the Vijaya bow to Lord Shiva but in Nagashwin's universe it seems that Karna entrusted his bow to Ashwatthama who is known to be a great devotee of Lord Shiva as it was not explicitly shown another theory might be that Parshuram got the bow from Karna after his death and being a chiranjeevi himself like ashwatthama he gave it to the son of his other student dronacharya or maybe it was mahadev shiva himself who entrusted the destructive weapon to his devotee for the upcoming epic battle in several versions of mahabharata when karna died vasudeva krishna came to him in the disguise of a brahmin and asked danvir karna to give him something before departing from the mortal realm in his last moments he plucked his two golden teeth and presented them to lord krishna and only then krishna showed him his vishwarupam and granted him three boons karna asked to be cremated in a place that was completely pure and so krishna placed his pyre on his own hands he then asked lord krishna to end all discrimination of caste a practice that affected him a lot and in the end he asked to be reincarnated with the divine lord himself in his next life which the eighth avatar of lord vishnu also accepted And I guess Nagashwin did a fabulous job of incorporating Karna's reincarnation into this story. So my guess is that Bhairava is indeed the reincarnation of Karna and he is still facing problems in a futuristic society cursed with a different kind of discrimination, a discrimination of wealth. Bhairava is probably unaware of his past life at this moment, but after touching the Vijaya Dhanush, he remembered the teachings of Parashuram, those that he forgot while fighting Arjun. After touching the weapon, Bhairava went into a trance and forgot what carnage he bestowed upon the complex soldiers and commander Manas. But in time, Ashwatthama and Bhairava will mend their differences and the massively powerful Chiranjeevi will help him remember his past life and will probably teach him the ancient art of weaponry that he had forgotten. The tragedy was that Bhairava had no clue about it, and I believe that even after he picked the weapon and its powers returned to it, he didn't realize what he had done. Bhairava till the very end wanted those bounty units which he knew that he would only get if he captured Sumati and took her to Supreme Yaskin. And one of the most prominent easter eggs about this reincarnation theory is that we see Bhairava donning his armor for most of the film's runtime. We know that Karna was born with Kavacha and Kundala fueled by his father Surya Dev's blessings. But when he was destined to face Arjun, his father or guardian deity Lord Indra came to him as a Brahmin and asked for Karna's protective gear. Known to be a great charitable human being, Karna offered it to him, despite knowing the entire ordeal from his father or guardian deity Surya Dev. Also, if you have noticed, Bhairava was found in a basket, just like Karna, who is raised by a captain played by Dulkar Salman, which is a nod to Adrinath who raised him. His Danvir persona is apparent when he spends all his savings to repair Puji. All these references were there to prepare us for the big reveal. Tree of Life or the Kalpavriksha. 
In Shambhala, a massive tree can be seen at the center of the ancient mythological city. Mariam was tending to the already dead tree and it showed signs of being alive once Sumati stepped inside Shambhala. The Kalpa Vriksha or Kalpa Taru is described as a divine tree that grants wishes and it emerged from the Samudra Manthana process. Some ancient Madhava texts suggest that a small portion of the poison called Hala Hala which wasn't swallowed by Lord Shiva became the body of Kali which again creates a bond between good and evil and it probably suggests that the darkest shadows pave the way for the brightest light and vice versa. Yaskin and his final form. Gandiv was forged by the divine lord Brahma. Thus when Yaskin administered the droplet of Kalki's extraction into his body, his emaciated skinny body was rejuvenated. Probably the Kali of this universe, a demon devoid of any form, thus got a body of his own and being created by lord Brahma himself, he became worthy to touch the Gandiv. If you noticed his ultimate form, it mimicked the stance of a divine being which is probably another nod to Lord Brahma. In ancient Hindu texts, when Parikshit was about to kill Kali, he surrendered and told Parikshit about the eventuality of fate and the circular nature of light and darkness in the concept of time. In the beginning, when Lord Brahma was creating the universe, Kali's ancestors Adharma and Mithya too came to be from the back of the Supreme Creator. It also creates a parallel between the Sharapuja form of Yaskin and Kali. Anyway, Kali asked Parikshit for a place to reside and learning that Kali cannot be destroyed, he granted him five places to be precise. Betting establishments, slaughterhouses, places where individuals of immoral lifestyles live, taverns and gold. Kali then quickly entered those places and even Parikshit's crown. He made Parikshit perform sinful acts and after his death, he entered everyone's mind and corrupted it marking the progression of Kalyuga. Mariam and Rumi Shambhala's leaders and preachers, Mariam and Rumi, have references from various Abrahamic texts. In one instance, Rumi mentions that Kalki, Rasul, second coming of Jesus, are all the same things that are destined to happen. In Islamic texts, it is said that on Judgment Day, the Messenger of God or Rasul will assist the Mahdi and his Muslim followers during the wars against the false Messiah and his supporters. Some texts even mention the villain as an incarnation of the devil also known as Lucifer or Iblis or his child the Antichrist and Kali is no different than this idea. Maryam is another name for the Holy Mother Mary and Rumi is a clever nod to Jalal al-Din Muhammad Rumi, a great Islamic scholar and a key figure in Sufi mysticism. This goes to show that Nagashwin's world building is not only centered around India and its cultures but it concerns the entire world as well. Kashi and Vishaha Kashi, also known as Varanasi, is an ancient city of India, situated at the banks of the holy river Ganga. Kashi is depicted as the first city of this world and is predicted that it will be the last. It is still a place of devotion, art and culture, but the film depicts the place as a future refuge of the last surviving human faction. People here have forgotten the name of the gods and they are just trying to survive the day. The place is filled with ancient structures now converted into shops and bars which depict the ultimate decadence of humanity. A huge structure called complex is extracting all the vital sustenance from the ground, leaving these people living off scraps. The air is polluted, which is probably a nod to Vishaha, the citadel of the place where Kali will rule. In the end, Kali's story in this kalpa will end here, but we will talk about that in a different video. Sumati and Shambhala Sumati, according to Hindu mythology, was the mother of the 10th avatar of Lord Vishnu, Kalki. In the film, we saw that some 80, as she was called in the complex, was unaware of her destiny and that she had a huge role to play in the upcoming battle. She was surprised when even after being declared infertile, she had a baby in her womb. She got attached to it even though she knew that she had got pregnant through an artificial process and that what was there in her womb was just a part of an experiment. But the gods had other plans for her. She followed her impulses and escaped from the complex, but she could never really understand why Ashwatthama was protecting her, why Mariam and the others in Shambhala were ready to give their lives for her, and why the complex wanted her back so desperately. Shambhala in ancient texts is mentioned as the birthplace of Kalki. In Kalachakrayan and ancient Buddhist texts, it is mentioned heavily as a utopian place existing in the fourth dimension. It is mentioned that Shangri-La and Nagashwin did a marvelous job of hiding it in a hidden layer of the Himalayas or probably Kundun Mountains. Kala Bhairava Bhairava is probably a nod to Lord Kala Bhairava. 
Throughout the film, we find multiple mentions of Kala Bhairava, an incarnation of Lord Shiva, who is also known as Dandapani or a version of Shiva having a staff of punishment in his hand. In the end, we saw Bhairava embodying a similar role with Ashwatthama's staff as he kills Commander Manas in a trance state as Karna. Kala Bhairava's pendant is also presented to Bhairava in a scene, but he rejects the idea of evolving into a protector of Kashi. In several texts, Kala Bhairava is seen riding a dog and Bujji being a loyal and protective vehicle might be a derivative of that idea. And when pushed to the edge, Bhairava can be as fierce and merciless as Kala Bhairava himself. Thank you for watching this video and do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Kalki 2898 AD. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you in the next one and for the time being we're signing off. कल के लिए एंड आई एल बी बैक बाय